If you're new here, uh, here today with us at Northminster, uh, you need to know that this whole New Year month of January, we've been tracking on what does it mean to follow Jesus. And it means singing like that uh, and serving like you two uh, and finding our way of a way of Jesus in our everyday life. Uh, just this last week, I was listening to a famed neurosurgeon, Dr. David Levy, talking about how the brain needs joy and we find joy chiefly in our relationships with one another and, as a Christian man, he pointed out, in our life with God. Um, here at Northminster, one of our goals is to be joyful and alive in Christ. And so, friends, that comes through our relationship with Jesus and one another. And uh, it's good for us to focus on how following Jesus uh, brings us that joy. And so we should turn to Jesus for coaching. Uh, our scripture lesson today is from Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is teaching about following faith and life, and we pick up his teaching at verse 19. Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for your teaching. Holy Spirit, wing the words of the Son to our hearts now. Lord, please help me with my message. Help us with our listening that we might hear your voice, Jesus, and follow you. Amen. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. And they just keep going around and around and around. One of the Disneyland rides, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, on that ride there's this scene in which these robotic pirates are endlessly chasing women. There's no pretty way to say it. They're just chasing these women around and around. They're also chasing loot and they're pillaging. Uh, but they just keep going around and around. Um, and if you're a cynical adult and you want to ruin the magic of Disneyland, you can point out to a child that they're just on a circular little track. But it's good for us to ask, is there a circle track that you've been on lately, and do you want to get off of it? And stop chasing that which really does not satisfy, and find in your life that peace that you most want and most need. As we've already said in worship today, there's one thing. Can we do that again? Grab your index finger and just, just make that symbol. This is a handy little sim handy symbol uh, that's connected to your arm so you can take it with you today after worship. Years ago in the movie City Slickers, it's a comedy, there's a scene in which Billy Crystal character, Mitch, uh, is alone with a very tough macho and real cowboy whose name is Curly and he's played by Jack Palance. Now Mitch, played by Billy Crystal, he's on this touristy dude ranch western adventure because he's looking for meaning, he's stressed, he's discouraged. He's looking for something in his life. And so Curly, the cowboy, gives Mitch some life advice. He says, do you know what the secret of life is? Billy Crystal asks, your finger? And he says, no. 
It's one thing. Just one thing. You stick to that, and the rest don't matter. Now, if I was there with Curly and Mitch, I would tweak it just a bit and say the main thing is keeping the main thing the main thing. I know, deep thoughts from Pastor Andy. Wow. Wow. But this is another item I want you to take home from church today. Now, in the comedy City Slickers, the movie leaves you, the audience, figuring out what that main thing is. Now, there's some messages and warm themes in the movie about friendship and adventure and the sacredness of life. There's a calf that's born. But the theme of the movie is focus. Finding real peace through focus rather than just staying in stress. Now, can you make that number one shape one more time? You can. I want you to ask, what is the main thing about you in your life? What's the number one? What's your number one thing today, and what will it be tomorrow, this week? I have an English Bible, in fact, it's this one, that has an inserted heading over today's scripture reading that says, Jesus teaches about money. But I'm not confident that Jesus is here just teaching about money. I think Jesus is teaching us here about getting off that circle track of chasing that which ultimately doesn't satisfy and how we can serve one master who gives us our real treasure. Uh, maybe Jesus is helping us see here today that there is a difference between piracy and piety. One kind of life is centered on getting. If you devote your life to only getting, getting money, getting sex, getting attention, getting power, uh, only getting for yourself, it leads you by the end of your life, I guarantee it, you're going to end up in your life sounding like a pirate. Arg. The other kind of life Jesus wants us to focus on here is a life centered on giving. Giving your life away to God who deserves our investment and who will reward you with life as you give him your life. Now, some of you might be reacting mentally to me right now, thinking, Avast, Pastor Matey. I certainly be not a pirate. No, but, but like pirates, we can spend enormous energy in our lives hunting for treasure in our lives, and it's so tempting for us to use wrong treasure maps. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And it makes us wonder, what if our hearts are aching, struggling, hurting, because we've been longing for that which is not our real treasure. Jesus also said you cannot serve both God and money. Now, you know, we can look at this statement and argue a bit, can't we? There might be something deep within you that says, yeah, I can. Uh, um, you know, here we are in worship. Uh, I, I'm singing, I'm praying, I'm worshiping God, but I also have money. Um, um, I, I, I earn a living. I, I pull down a pension. And just when you're tempted to look at this and argue with Jesus, yeah, I think I can, Jesus. We have to stop and notice that key word, serve. Friends, there's a difference between earning money and serving money. There's a difference between a stewardship of money and a devotion to money. There's a difference between you managing money or it managing you. Bob Dylan wrote a great song years ago called You Gotta Serve Somebody. Oh, you may be a preacher with your spiritual pride. You may be a city councilman taking bribes on the side. You may be working in a barber shop. You might even know how to cut hair. You may be somebody's mistress 
maybe somebody's heir, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Yeah, you're going to have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. See, serve and servant are giant words in our lives. Friends, are you a steward, manager of the money in your life? Or have you become its servant? The Bible, as some of you may know, comments on money a lot. Uh, and and I, I, if you've ever wondered why, someone has calculated that in the Bible, there are about 500 verses in the entire Bible uh, focused on the topic of prayer. There's another 500 or so verses that are focused on the topic of faith. Prayer, faith. But there are about 2,000 verses related to money and possessions. Do you ever wonder why money is one of Jesus' favorite topics? We know. It's because it exerts enormous influence upon us. Someone once said, often we like to think we have money, but more often than not, money has us. And Jesus wants us to think of our life in much bigger terms than even money. What is it that you're actually serving in your life? You know, we manage our health. We enjoy our family. We manage our money. We practice spiritual habits. But friends, what are you actually in business for? What are you living your life for? What are you getting out of bed in the morning for? Max Dupree is a wonderful and highly successful uh, businessman and entrepreneur. Uh, And as a CEO, uh, in one of his books, he's pointed out that money is important. He says money for a business is like breathing. You have to have it. But then he says, but who would have simply making money as your goal in business? That would be like saying your goal in life is just to keep breathing. Really? You know, there is something. There is a real treasure. And Jesus is saying it's found beyond just breathing. There's a treasure that's found in living in a relationship with God in which you're devoted to serving God. I'm told in the, in the language of the people of Ghana, the question, what is your religion, is literally asked as, whom do you serve? Whom or what are you serving? Now, you know, if I were to put this question to you, whom or what are you serving to a vote right now, I, I'm pretty certain there would be a unanimous answer. It's God. It's God, not money. But friends, note this, whom or what are you serving, I believe, is a present and continuing question of our lives, or should be. Who you serve each day is not a one-and-done answer. It's an ongoing tug and pull in our lives, whether it's money, or sex, or power, or ambition, or influence, or just pleasure. You see, God puts an array of good things in our lives, into our life and existence for us to enjoy, but we can so quickly and easily, subtly, turn good things into masters that control us. Somebody has said, idolatry is turning a good thing into a God thing. Something becomes sacred over you and over time when it develops a power over you to distract you, to to exact behaviors from you that are damaging to yourself and to others. And so we have to continually practice a serving, following approach that keeps our life centered in God, God's peace, God's promises, God's word which is our real treasure. So how do we do that? How do we take Jesus at his word? Well, firstly, friends, ask, what are you looking at? What are you looking at these days? Jesus gets us thinking about our vision, doesn't he? And he's asking us, what have you been directing your attention to, and how is it affecting your outlook? 
He says the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your life is full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, there's great darkness in you. See, the Bible doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. It says that the love of money is the root of all evil. What are you looking at and how are you looking at it? The second question is, where are you really finding peace and joy these days? And now Jesus shifts from our eyes to our heart. In the Bible, the heart is that symbol of our core identity, our soul. And Jesus says, where your treasure is, that's where you'll find your heart. And with this note, Jesus points out very practically that things in this world, they rot, they break, uh, they can be stolen, they decay. Uh, even certain relationships, as some of you know, I used to have years ago a foam San Diego Charger number one finger. I think I even brought it in to worship years ago. Well, I no longer have that foam finger because the Chargers no longer have me. They moved from San Diego and from my heart. Now, next week, I'm cheering for the Eagles, not the... Yeah. And next year, the Arizona Cardinals will take it all. But teams fade. And teams shift. And metal rusts. And toys break. Uh, 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 and even beloved individuals might hurt you, let you down. Only God, in His holy, perfect love for you, will never disappoint. Every day, friends, ask, what is the real and best source of my joy today? Where will I find my deepest peace? I want to tell you, friends, that your joy and peace is found in your life with the living God who created you, who put breath in you, who loves you, who has promised to never leave you or abandon you, who loves you so much he even inserted his own son into our life to show us how to live, to die for us in our place, to rise from de the death so that we might live in glory. What are you looking at each day? And how are you looking at it? And where are you finding your deepest joy? But thirdly, whom or what are you serving? P.T. Barnum once said, money is a terrible master, but an excellent servant. And Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either you'll hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to this one and despise that one. You know, we Christians are prone to do two things with regularity. One is take up an offering, and the other one is talk about the joy of giving. And I've never been embarrassed about either one of those. You know, like you, when I was a little child, I loved getting. Oh, toys and presents, getting. It's a kick. But you know, as we all grow into adulthood, we learn year after year that the real joy is found in giving. Yeah, we get that as we grow older. And that's why, friends, this offering plate, in my opinion, is one of my favorite symbols of the Christian life. We put money in here because it is a wonderful way we can serve. Serve and, and make an impact in Durban, Swaziland, South Africa, with Joe and Avril's partnership. We put money in here because it's our weekly way of dethroning money. It's a statement. God is first, not this. And we put money in here every week with joy, thinking about what God is going to do with gospel work through our gifts. So friends, let me wrap up here. Let's quickly remember, and let's remember in our lives the treasure maps that really work for us. The first treasure map is knowing this. All that we have is from God. We are the original borrowers, every one of us. You did nothing to become alive. And nothing in your life, no thing, is eternally yours. So we need to begin by acknowledging that God is the real giver of all that counts. Secondly, we need to remember that real satisfaction is found in our life with God. The best kind of investments are those that have eternal value. And here I'm thinking of some F words. Faith. 
Faith, your faith is what you can take into eternity. And that influences some other key F words. Family. Sharing your faith with your loved ones so that they will be with you. Your friends. Your faith, your family. Your f- Those are the things I want to invest in personally this year. Thirdly, I think we need to remember that sometimes the best investment guidance is found in sparrows. Jesus, at another point in his life, told us to stop worrying and go out and watch a sparrow. And and it's been said that no one works harder than the average sparrow to make a living. But the point is, they're not getting ulcers. They're not worrying. They're They're not fretting. They know food is there. They know who they are, and they get to work. And if you watch a sparrow for a while, you'll also see that they fly and sing. So friends, how is the treasure in your life? Or or are you feeling like you've been on a circle track, going round and around for that which is not really satisfying? You know, here's two symbols you can take with you today. One hand pointing up, this is your source of joy, your ultimate treasure, your life with Christ. And the other is an open hand, letting go of that which is distracting you, hurting you, diverting you. It was in one of the Raiders of the Lost Ark movies. I think it's the one called Lost Empire. Uh, There's a scene in which Indiana Jones is facing a life and death situation, decision. He's hanging uh, over a precipice that is death if he drops. Uh, and and he's a, it's a choice between reaching out with one hand to grab the chalice of the Holy Grail. He's found it. It's the ultimate for any archaeologist. Or does he simply grab the other hand of his father and be rescued from death? I think Chris has the scene for us. Junior, give me your other hand. I can't hold on. I can get it. I can almost reach it, Dad. Indiana. Indiana. Let it go. We need that soundtrack in our lives also. But you notice that moment of struggle? Literally struggling with this object versus saving his life. I think we struggle. We have those moments. Friends, is God saying to you today, let that go and grab both of my hands? Do you need to allow God to lift you today and embrace you? You know, the question of life is really not what's in your wallet or even what's in your hands. It's what or who is in your heart. Will you pray with me? Holy, awesome God. This morning, we want to let go of anything of lesser value that has been captivating us, distracting us. Jesus, we want to renew our walk with you today. We want to claim you and take hold of you, for Lord, you've been reaching out to us through your Son. Show us, Lord, how to live each day treasuring you above all, treasuring your love and living and sharing your love wherever you take us. Jesus, be our number one today, each day. Be my number one. 